This is a talk about the control volume approach. There's two reasons to do the control volume approach. First, if you like application, understanding this approach and the closed system approach make application much easier. Second, if you like understanding theory or understanding the main ideas, the control volume approach is essential to understanding fluid mechanics. Now a system is defined as whatever the engineer selects for analysis. For example, I can select the nozzle of the rockets for analysis. For example, I can select the space shuttle plus its booster rockets for analysis. For example, I can select the exhaust plume for analysis. There are exactly two ways to select systems. Method one is the control volume approach and we select a region in space Method two is the closed system approach, and we select matter of fixed identity. Let me illustrate the closed system. In modeling the car, I can idealize this as a particle shown from the top going around a curved path here. And what I've done is imagine that the car is a particle of mass m. So that's an example of a closed system. A second example of a closed system, I could select a wheel and imagine this wheel is in fixed axis rotation about a center point and the wheel is spinning at a rate of omega and accelerating at a rate of alpha and I could just model this wheel. And this is a closed system because the wheel or my model is always matter of fixed identity. A third example of a closed system is if I'm modeling a wind turbine and I'm interested in structural design, I'll select the uh, shaft of the turbine or the tower and the blades and I might idealize it like I've shown here. So there's a wind load on the blades, a wind load or drag force on the tower itself and then I show the, the forces of the structure with a moment and a horizontal and vertical force respectively. When I define a closed system, as an engineer, I want to define very specifically what my system is. In this case, it's the air inside the cylinder. I want to define where my boundary is, and everything that's not in my system is part of the surroundings, or sometimes called the environment. By contrast, when an engineer selects a control volume, we select a volumetric region and we allow mass to flow across the boundary. For example, with this wind turbine, if we want to analyze the efficiency of this, we're going to select a control volume. So here I've uh, sketched a control volume and there's air flow across this boundary. So there's air flowing into the control volume across this boundary and there's air flow out this boundary. So again, the key issue with the control volume is mass can cross the boundary. A second example of a control volume, if I'm going to model this jet engine, so I have flow in here, I have fuel coming in somewhere into the jet engine, then I have hot exhaust flowing out. My control volume might look like this. I have mass flow rate in, I have a mass flow rate of fuel in, and I have a mass flow rate of exhaust out. So the control volume means the volumetric region selected by the engineer. The control surface is the boundary of this region. That'd be this boundary here. And of course, that's a volumetric region, so you really want to kind of sketch that like a box or something. And the surroundings or environment are everything that are not part of the um, control volume region. When we select a control volume, this can be constant volume or it can be deforming. This means the volume changes with time. This means the volume stays constant with time. Let me show you examples of these two cases. Okay, this sketch shows water flowing into a tank and then water exiting the tank. And in general, the level of the tank could be going up or it could be going down or staying the same. To analyze this, we select a volumetric region, so the volumetric region might surround the tank like this, 
And then there's two ways to do this. One, we can decide we'll select this as a constant volume control volume. And what it means is that the volume of this region stays constant with respect to time. Another way to model this problem is to select this control volume. But now, let's imagine that this volume will increase as the water level decreases, or we can imagine that this level would decrease as the water level decreases. In this case, the volume of the control volume is changing with time, and this is called a deformable control volume. This slide captures the ideas. So when we select a control volume, it can be fixed, volume constant with time, or it can be deforming, volume changes with time. Okay, in the textbook, figure 5.8, summarizes all the ideas. A system is what we select for analysis. We can then select a control volume or a closed system. A control volume can be deforming or it can be fixed. And if we select a closed system, there's four different types that are used in engineering. Okay, in the textbook, I built this table to help you understand the difference between the control volume approach and the closed system approach. I'll hit the three key differences. Number one is for the closed system approach, mass cannot cross the boundaries. For a control volume, mass nearly always is crossing the boundaries. Secondly, the mass of a closed system must stay constant with time and it must always contain the exact same materials, whereas the mass of a control volume over here can change with time or it can stay constant with time. Number three, the closed system always contains the same matter, whereas with the control volume approach in general, um, there'll be different matter inside the volumetric region at different instances in time. Three big ideas I want to leave you with. As an engineer, you always want to be very methodical to select your system to define exactly what you want to analyze. Secondly, is when you select your system, there's two basic approaches that are used in engineering. I'll idealize my system as a closed system, or I'll select a control volume. And lastly, um, when you select a control volume, it can be either uh, a constant volume or a deforming control volume. And there's four types of closed systems. And I put all these details into figure 5.8. That concludes this talk. I hope you've enjoyed this and found some useful ideas. We'll see you next time.